So yes, thank you again, everyone, for joining us for pushing through the pandemic. Relief, resources, career advice, and more for navigating the COVID-19 crisis. Again, I'm Andrew King, Editor-in-Chief of Canadian Musician, and joining us today is the President and Publisher of Canadian Musician, Jim Norris. Uh, he's been in the business for over four decades. He has uh, been a teacher at the Esteem Metalworks Institute. He has spoken on and moderated panels at, well, pretty much every uh, industry conference coast to coast. Uh, suffice it to say, we've got a wealth of knowledge and resource here to share with you. We're very excited to do so. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Jim shortly, but uh, just walk you through a quick few bullets here. So uh, in the presentation today, first off, um, this has been covered really well, including in our ebook, including in a lot of other great publications and, and sources. So uh, we won't spend too much time on it, but we will point you to some of the key sources of financial relief, uh, both from the government of Canada, as well as some associations and uh, organizations and companies serving the music industry specifically. Uh, and then that's where we will bring Jim in is when we get to some career building resources shortly after that. We'll talk about all of the different revenue streams that you you as an artist will have at your disposal or can be taking advantage of, maybe some that you haven't thought of or thought of in a while, uh, or maybe this is a better time to, never been a better time to get into some of these. Uh, after that, we'll point you to some other sources of information, people doing cool things that could be of value to uh, pushing your career forward in the next few weeks. And finally, we'll wrap up with just a checklist of, again, things you can be doing now. We want to give you information that you can be putting into practice the moment that we're done here, uh, maybe even during as those wheels start turning. Uh, so we'll walk through the stay home musicians to do list. And as I mentioned before, you can grab this from the shared files. Which I will open up right now. You'll see little prompts for this uh, in the upper right of your screen. Okay, shared. Perfect, okay, so feel free to grab those at any point as we go. Uh, you'll see the prompts in the top left of your interface. You can also, uh, in your right-hand interface there, uh, click on the shared files window and these will all be lined up and ready for you. Okay, let's jump into it. So as far as financial relief and support, uh, what we've got here, this is from the government of Canada and not exclusive to musicians. So hopefully uh, if you are eligible, you've taken advantage of the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. That's the CERB, the $500 a week that uh, we found to be incredibly easy. They've made this very simple to both apply for and to get. And it seems to be that you know when it comes to scrutiny as to who's eligible, the government wants to get support to people's hands now and then will retroactively be going through to make sure that everyone that got it is eligible. All this to say, um, if you are qualify for the CERB uh, and need it, get on it now and it's a quick, easy process. Uh, can't recommend it highly enough. The government has also introduced a few other uh, programs if you go to Canada.ca that may be of use, but uh, of course they've extended the deadline to file your uh, income tax for 2019. They are offering some mortgage payment deferral programs in tandem uh, with the banks. And then below here, depending on who your bank is, if you haven't already, be in touch with your financial advisor uh, because a number of the private banks are working in tandem with government or coming up with their own initiatives to help ease the burden uh, on their clients. And uh, there's a few ways that some of the different, well, talking major banks here, have done that for people. If you've got any questions about these, uh, you, again, feel free to fire them in. Mandy, appreciate you joining us and for the kind words. That's great. Can only do this with uh, support of folks like you. As far as uh, specific industry focused support for artists and music industry professionals, uh, bear this in mind. If you're like a touring pro recording studio, for example, uh, some of these funds apply to you, specifically the Unison Benevolent Fund. This is a key one that has long been the lifeblood of the Canadian music industry. They're being flooded with requests now. And so while we encourage you to take advantage of Unison if you need it, uh, if you are in a position to help Unison at this point in time, it's never been more important. You've never been able to make more of an impact. So our friends at the Unison Benevolent Fund have a significant fund. It started at half a million dollars, but 
the major labels, some of the major streaming services have started to contribute to this. And so it is growing. Um, and again, Unison is there not just for artists, but also for industry professionals, uh, touring technicians, recording engineers, etc. All of their information is available at the website. Uh, our friends at Factor have changed a few of the parameters of their programs to be ultimately more lenient and beneficial to uh, musicians. Now, if you had Factor funding previously for any event that's been canceled or interrupted because of, because of COVID-19, they're still going to honor that. Um, go to their website and find out more about what they're doing. But if you uh, have been working with Factor at all thus far, they're there to help you. So can um, you can grab all of this information again in the ebook canadianmusician.com slash poking. Uh, pushing, sorry, but our friends at Silken have uh, set up an advanced fund that they're favoring for touring and performing artists or composers for film and television who have been out of work. But basically, based on your previous earning stats with Silken, they will uh, provide you interest free advances for the time being. Uh, hopefully, there's more coming from our friends at Silken. They've said that's the case. And of course, we'll keep you up to date, CanadianMusician.com slash coronavirus. Uh, CBC Creative Relief Fund, uh, again, it's in the ebook, and, and I guess we can, uh, we touched on the main ones here. Our friends at AFM and CFM, the Musicians Union, have some programs in place. Uh, and finally, I've only listed two examples because it seems that every provincial uh, music industry association, so uh, Manitoba Music, Sask Music, Music PEI, etc., have been doing great things for their local members, um, two that have been really, really encouraging and kind of creative are the Showcase BC and Music Together initiatives out of Ontario, whereby they are supporting the industry uh, by doing paid virtual performances, supporting those with some promotion marketing, and yeah, basically everybody wins. So. Lots that you can take advantage of. Again, the ebook has more information on those and direct links to make it easy as possible for you to take advantage. Without further ado, let's jump into multiple revenue streams here. Jim, thank you uh, for being here with us and for uh, being so patient while we got through the first part here. Um, I'm gonna set you up to walk through some of these. A lot of folks are, of course, going to uh, take for granted that these are revenue streams that exist in the music industry and that they are taking advantage of. However, there may be some here that you haven't really thought of or maybe that uh, seem daunting to take on, don't know where to start. And uh, well, we're gonna get into that right now. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, great to be here and, and sh share some of this. Now, a lot of these things are things that are relevant and true in any times, not only the current uh, situation, but any time. Um, so the, the first thing, even before we talk about revenue streams and all these types of things is, is just, we like to use the word traction. So your band, your, yourself, whatever it is you do, you have to have some traction. Now, what I what I mean by that is that there has to be some demand for what you do. And that could be when you were playing live and when you are again, um, are people staying away in droves or are people actually coming to see you? And, and even more important than that, coming back and bringing their friends with them. Uh, are your uh, recorded product, is that working? Is it being sold? So I find a lot of musicians have a lot of sour grapes with this and they tend to look at themselves last. And this applies to anything. It doesn't matter what it is, whatever product it is, whether it's music, whether it's sports equipment, it doesn't, cars, anything at all. There's a lot of effort putting on, uh, putting together a product that people are going to want. Because if not, uh, a lot of these things don't matter because the revenue will be zero. So I think that's really important to think about and to work on. So um, these revenue streams, and it, it, I think it's also very obvious lately that a lot of musicians are way too much focused on playing live. And when that disappeared, their revenue went to zero. Um, and this, the, the concept of multiple uh, streams of revenue uh, is true to any business. It's true to our business, it's true to any business. You should be diversified, not depending on any one, and certainly not depending on any one company or person for sure, because when one of them goes south, which it has here, then you're you're kind of screwed. So, um, 
and part of that traction is your material. Now that could be material that you write, or if you're covering other artists, again, that comes down to putting some care and choice into what, what those songs are and, and how you interpret them and, and bring your own uh, uh, style to them, I guess you could call it. So, so that's really important. Um, secondly is the way they're performed. Um, so your physical ability to sing and to play and all, all of that type of thing. And then third is just the presentation. So that could be if once you're playing live again or were, that's going to be your stage presence and your, your, uh, image and branding and all of that type of thing. So, so those are all things to, to work on and to think about because, if it's not working, a lot of times it's the product. And that's true with anything. It's true with uh, cars and, and guitars and, and all kinds of products that we see come out. And when we get the product release, we just look at it and say, that, that that's not going to work. Like nobody's going to want that. Um, nothing wrong with guitar picks, but we don't need 4,000 different kinds, you know. Um, so there's that. that's the thing. You got to think about that very carefully. So all of these streams obviously you can't do all of this but you need to choose a few of these so you're diversified and live performance now is is um in person it's starting to come back a little bit there's drive-ins which is a uh, is working in europe and we're going to start seeing that here and it's going to come back but live performance on the internet as well is another one and most of what i'm seeing there is just horrible uh, just terrible, bad performances, bad everything. And uh, I don't think that serves anybody well. Um, and of course, there's so much of it now. There's, I don't know how many emails. I get two or 300 a day for online performances. And when you go and look at them, they're just bad in every way. So, I mean, what I always like to say is you, you got to make sure you don't suck. And, and a, a lot of artists kind of do. That's the problem. Whoops, back, back to that one we skipped ahead there or we skipped somewhere. There we go. So each one of these, um, it could be a book. I mean, there's so much to it. And what you want to do is take this list. Um, and if there's some of these that seem interesting, then just Google them. So obviously live performance, performing live recorded music sales, and that could be vinyl. It could be CDs. It could be downloads streaming, of course, which is a, huge part of the marketplace nowadays, selling merch, t-shirts and sweatshirts and hats, um, doing session work. But obviously if you're playing sucks, you're not gonna be doing session work. So one of the th things that's really important if you wanna be a session player is you have to be able to read incredibly well. So if that's something you wanna do, um, you've gotta be able to do sessions in one shot. Uh, being a producer, lots of musicians do production, uh, jingles, can be can be huge and if if you're in a television commercial and you all you also do the visuals again depending on what you look like but if you do the visuals the money from that is exceptional uh royalties from sales of records whether you're releasing it yourself or with the record company uh performing rights from your songwriting mechanical rights neighboring rights um for some artists uh, sheet music, songbooks, one of our biggest categories at Music Book Plus is songbooks. So all from, you know, well-known artists, but even some that aren't that well-known. Uh, sync licensing, getting your music in movies, television, games. The game market is just like humongous. Uh, publishing. So uh, you may, if you're a, a successful songwriter, you may and should choose to set up your own publishing company. Uh, crowdfunding. There's a lot of different ways of doing that. And a lot of artists use that successfully to raise money um, for their next project. So, uh, and usually they offer something of value to the fan teaching. Certainly lots of musicians teach. That could be done in person. And of course, nowadays that can be done online. There's various platforms for doing that where you can charge money and, and do lessons, acting, um, a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of artists do acting, um, writing. You, you might choose to write a book, uh, public speaking. Uh, a lot of artists do that type of things. Ted talks, endorsements, 
Um, if you're a hot guitarist, you might be able to get an endorsement deal with Fender or Gibson. Um, sometimes it doesn't pay cash necessarily, but it does give you product and a lot of promotion. Uh, sponsorships, and I find a lot of musicians think of multi-million dollar sponsorships, but even at a local level, there's sponsorships available. Um, so if you're playing in a, a certain area, like in Montreal, um, or in anywhere really, there's a lot of local companies that want to align with music fans. So they will, they will uh, become a sponsor and they take a proper proposal, but they'll sponsor, um, live events, but they'll also sponsor online events as well. Grants. And of course, nowadays there's a lot due to the pandemic, but in any time there's grant money available. Factor has a lot of that. And then awards, prizes. So if you're involved in a, in a competition or a contest, there's prizes there that might be product or it could be cash. Sometimes there's tens of thousands of dollars. So this gives you a few ideas, but I think um, before the next thing comes along to interrupt part of your career, you want to take the ones of these that make the most sense and explore them, but not only explore them, get them starting, started, um, you know, pick two or three and say, okay, I'm going to work on this. I've got another month or two before I actually play anywhere. So which of these makes sense? It might be teaching. So like getting that going um, and, and making sure that next time around, uh, if any of this stops for any reason, um, you've got money coming in. And, and that's that's the key. So be, you should be always be a songwriter, in my opinion. Um, songwriters make all the money. Uh, um, and if you, if you can get some songs recorded by other people and uh, – then you've got those those handy dandy checks from SoCan coming in, and uh, you know it takes a bit of work, um, but that's something you should be working on being a songwriting. And it's just doing a lot of it. It's not the first thing you write might be garbage, but you just write a lot of songs, and uh, you know you could obviously test that in your recordings and, and live once you're playing live again. But being a songwriter, I think, is is really important. Spot on. So lots Agreed. to think about and there. <laughs> tons to think about. And that's why we wanted to start with this is to get the wheels turning, give you some oh, opportunities again that maybe you hadn't thought of, hadn't recognized the potential in, or maybe just didn't know where to start. And particularly, particularly on that last one uh, is where we want to help you. As Jim was walking through some of these different revenue streams, I was counting and didn't even fill one hand. Uh, the ones that I can't think of, either an article we've done, a podcast episode, or maybe most significantly, a webinar that would at least give you an overview of what this particular revenue stream looks like and how you can start trying to take advantage of it. Um, so we'll be sharing a lot of content uh, over the next few minutes. Much of it is going to be coming from Canadian Musician Magazine or our podcast or our webinars. Um, but uh, yeah, I might as well let you know about that now. That uh, And you can check out all of our archives. If you go to nwcmarket.com, you can grab back issues of the magazine. If you prefer to read online, go to canadianmusician.com slash online, and you can access the digital, of editions, uh, digital editions of all of our recent issues. You will find tons of content on these very subjects. And that's what we're getting into here. So uh, as far as different places that you can be going, um, these are some of the key topics that we've seen a lot of people either asking us to learn more about, uh, that we've seen a lot of discussion on through uh, other people's uh, podcasts or live streams, et cetera, throughout the industry. Uh, so yeah, it goes without saying home recording, the opportunity to, I guess, get into that, uh, build a system, figure out your way around it, and then start building your skill set. There's never been a better time. Uh, September, October edition of Canadian Musician that you can get online has our annual home recording feature. In the current uh, issue of Canadian Musician that just dropped, May, June, we've got all kinds of home recording content. Jim was just talking about session work. Well, we've got a piece on how to put together a small home recording session that will give you quality high enough quality tracks that you can be doing session work around the world from our friend Paul Kim and out on the West Coast. Um, we've got two, three webinars on home recording that you can check out at nwcwebinars.com slash archives. What's great is that a lot of companies like Sonarworks, 
Uh, Asked him, like, there's all kinds of them that have been uh, doing big influx in webinars and educational resources since the COVID pandemic came along. Uh, there's also ones like mixed with the masters that have made all of or a significant chunk of their library free. So uh, again, a silver lining to our uh, self-isolation here is that there's a lot of great stuff out there that people have been sharing more of uh, that you can find. And again, a lot of it starts with us. As far as other uh, recording resources, Jim, anything come to mind for you that you'd uh, suggest to folks? Um, well, m you know, Music Books Plus, we talked about, we have a lot of good books for sale for sure. But uh, again, your old friend, Mr. Google, um, I find a lot of people that, I mean, using Google is a skill in itself. And when I was teaching at Metalworks, I'd always get questions saying, well, I can't find this, I can't find that. And they would think it was magic. But all I did was crank it into Google and, and try it different ways, um, you know, putting in your search terms differently. And there's there's so much there's so much out there. There's so many resources and uh, using social media, there's so many people that you can connect with to learn from or to work with. I mean, that's never been easier uh, than it's ever been. Make sure aside from Facebook and Twitter that you're also uh, active on LinkedIn. I mean, a lot of musicians aren't and they should be. Uh, they should be, you know, you should be building up your connections on, on there. Um, it's very business oriented, but still, um, there's a, they have some good groups on there on recording as well, and, and a lot of good uh, advice. Spot on, and well, here you go. Love the community help here. Uh, Darius from Toronto, um, studio veteran. We've had him in Professional Sound and Canadian Musician Magazine. Uh, he's just thrown in the comments that he's been helping artists set up their home studios and giving them basic walkthroughs of their equipment. Uh, mixed by Darius, I believe. Throw that into Google and find him very easily. Uh, live streaming. I've seen a ton of this, and as Jim was saying earlier, uh, you know, lots of varying degrees of quality in terms of performance, setup, uh, promotion, quality of audio and video. So um, this is, I mean, video live streaming, video conferencing has been around for some time, sure. Uh, but as far as musicians figuring out how to best employ it, uh, still kind of amidst that process right now. So again, you're not really behind the pack if you're just getting into live streaming now. And a good way to figure out what, what, what might work for you is assessing what you've seen other people do. And I mean, you're probably seeing a lot of what you don't want to be doing, um, but there have been some great examples. Post Malone's Nirvana set, for example, um, the live kitchen parties that have go been going on every week with a host of Canadian artists and celebrities. Uh, these are great examples where you can see what other people are doing, how they're doing it kind of firsthand and uh, come up with a way that um, yeah, we'll get you out to your audience in real time, but in a way that is consistent with and again, as Jim was reinforcing, good for your brand and public identity. Um, yeah, anything else on live streaming, Jim, maybe uh, good examples yeah, I of mean, people doing it right. A lot of this was bad before. I mean, it was bad before the pandemic. Now it's worse and way more of it. Um, it's just crazy. Uh, and, and the thing is, people do things online that they would never even consider doing live. So it, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, you wouldn't, I mean, maybe you would, but most people wouldn't go on stage in their pajamas, um, haven't shaved or washed in a month, and, you know, haven't rehearsed, obviously. And it, it, I don't see the point of it. Um, a lot of them say, well, we're going to do this because you're at home and we're going to entertain you. But, but you know, I'd rather watch a really bad movie than a lot of what I'm seeing online, unfortunately. You see some that are good, but, you know, it, it should be something you'd prepare for as you would a live performance, in my opinion, that it should be, you know, the background should be good and you should be dressed appropriately and you should, you should, uh, um, and you can do a lot of it, you know, collaborating nowadays, but, but you might even choose to go and, and do it from a club or do it from somewhere else other than, uh, other than your, in, in your jammies in your basement. And I've seen some of that where people have gone out or they've done it in a studio. I know there's a couple coming up where they've actually gone and, and, uh, stream from a studio and the studio is not going to mind that because assuming it's done well, they're getting promotion as well. So I think the key there is to is to make sure it's a quality experience 
that it ha has a point to it. Like, is it going to sell some product or is it going to enforce your brand and, and keep your, your fan base uh, committed until you can play live again? I find a lot of them that I see is, you know, if I had a CD, I'd take it back to the store because what I'm seeing is just, it's really bad, unfortunately. And, and, and I don't really see the point of it. Um, in many cases, I see some that are good, but a lot of them that aren't. And I, I think it, that's important that if wherever you present yourself, it doesn't matter what it is, you should be aware of your, your image and your brand and the, the quality of the music and the choice of material and all the rest of it, stage presence, I guess you could call it. Mm -hmm. Um, and here we go uh, to move things along a bit. Again, if, if folks like Darius love the suggestions from the community, um, but streaming revenues, well, at the beginning of 2020 in our January, February issue, we had a piece about um, streaming playlists and how to maximize your appeal to playlist curators to boost your profile on Spotify. And that does come with a trickle of revenue, obviously, a, a one that's not as significant as it should be, that's a separate issue. We'll work on uh, on streaming revenues is a separate issue. But as far as getting your music out there to more people onto more playlists, um, yeah, we've got that feature in our January, February issue that you can access very e easily. And then we did a webinar on it with Aaron Kinghorn from uh, Eek Productions and DPG, Digital Promotions Group, uh, giving you the goods on just that, what you can be doing, and you can be doing it from home here to uh, reach out to playlist curators and help boost your position on services like Spotify, Apple Music, um, again, partly for revenue, also for music discovery. Uh, crowdfunding, our last session was with Dave Cool of Bandzoogle talking about uh, effective crowdfunding, and that's both project-based, uh, like Kickstarter-style project-based uh, funding campaigns, or subscription-based continual support campaigns like you see on Patreon, for example, where your fans are uh, pledging a certain amount of money to you every month in exchange for content and perks that you've come up with. And uh, with all of these, defining your story, building out your narrative and brand identity online, uh, Steve Waxman, former head of marketing with Warner Music Group, now with uh, his own consulting firm, join us for a webinar on that, nwcwebinars.com slash archives. It's all there. It's all free, an hour or less, and uh, you'll have a great foundation to get going on this. Uh, same, develop a kick-ass career plan the last time that Jim and I collaborated on a webinar. It's up there online, nwcwebinars.com. Uh, we've got a feature in the current issue of the magazine on sharpening your social media and online profile. We're going to be bringing you a lot more of that down the road. Um, and of course, your media app. Assets. We're talking about your biography, your logo or word mark, your uh, guest photography. Uh, there are some solutions that something some people can be doing now. A uh, little trickier for others, depending on what your local re regulations are with regards to self isolation and just in general, learn a new skill. Uh, you're a guitarist, tinker around on the keyboard plenty of options out there. And um, yeah, I would love if you've got any questions on where to learn more about some of these things, or maybe you started and hit a roadblock, uh, hit us up here, because we're going to jump into questions. And got a great one um, that came in. Give me a second. Jim, maybe I'll uh, put this to you first. I've got some thoughts on it. Uh, but Brendan is wondering, on account of generating revenue, how beneficial is it to release new music right now? Um, so yeah, a formal album release rolling out to radio, public, etc. As an up-and-comer, having no ability to get out and perform in the foreseeable future, the cost and risk involves, is it viable to put out music at this time? Streams are down 48%. Um, yeah, and that's an interesting one, by the way. I think a lot of people thought streaming would be going up in this time, but without commutes and trips to the gym and whatnot, it seems that visual media has been uh, favored. But um, are people not hearing music right now? Is it a lost opportunity? I'll let Jim weigh in with his thoughts here, but uh, I was just on a call earlier with uh, that Eric Alper, social media icon and music publicist, and have a bit of insight on this. Uh, Jim, what do you think about uh, releasing music publicly, rolling out to radio, et cetera, uh, amidst our self-isolation? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's always a good time to release music, but again, you have to... You have to have a, a time. We've worked with a few different uh, 
CBC spotlight, uh, the, the, the winners. And uh, the thing that became very obvious working with a lot of musicians, well, a lot of people, there, there is no plan. And I, I think that's important that there has to be a timeline. And obviously it starts with writing the songs, recording the songs, getting them mastered, d- deciding what medium they're going to be on, whether it's vinyl or CD or downloads or whatever it is. And, and you know, going through that whole process, which takes some time anyway, and then uh, deciding how you're going to promote that. And a lot of people don't even think about that. So it could be playing live is one way. Radio is another way. There's a lot of ways on the, the internet. There's, there's, you know, there's just a lot of different ways of doing that. And then making sure that those promotional methods are in line with how people can actually purchase the product. I see a lot of that where people bring out a product. It doesn't really matter what it is, um, whether it's, uh, it could be could be music or it could be a book or it could be different things, but but it's not obvious how people can buy it, and it's important to have that in place. So, um, you know, Walmart. Not that you're necessarily be be uh, sold at Walmart, but they're still operating. Um, you could still buy CDs online. Um, you could certainly se- again. It comes back to traction. If you've got traction people will go to your website and they'll put in their credit card and they'll buy your CD or download their music or on iTunes. So, so, you know, all of those things are still there. Um, if anything, I'd have to say probably the online ordering of music is probably way up. Everything else is, um, uh, as far as radio goes, they still have to play music, uh, 24 hours a day. So nothing has really changed there. Is it easy to get your music on radio? No. One theme I see in these questions, and I've, I heard it at whenever I talk and at Metalworks, I always hear it's hard and it's difficult and it's a problem. Well, gee, too bad. I mean, anything worth doing is hard. And the more worthwhile doing it is, the harder it is. The good part about that is that 95% of the market will just drop off because it's hard. So now you're competing with a small part of the market because most people will give it a shot or not even, they'll just say it's hard. um, And then they just go away. So, you know, figure it out right now that if you want to put a record out at any time, whether it's now, whether it's in six months, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard recording it. It's going to be hard rehearsing. It's going to be hard rec- recording or uh, writing the songs. It's going to be hard getting airplay. And it's it everything's going to be hard, but that's, that's the way it is. That's the business you've chosen. It's not easy. But the good thing is a lot of other people will just give up. And, th- and that's not only true in this business. It's true in any business. It's a very small percentage in any business of products or companies that prosper very small. Um, and do they have problems? Absolutely. I mean, there's, if you read some biographies of some people who are very successful, some of the things they've gone through are just a nightmare. So I think, you know, any time is a good time to record an album and get it out there. Um, not having live is, is a bit of a problem, but there's ways around it. But I think if you're just starting on that now, um, it's going to be months at least before uh, the products available, and by then there there might might at least be some limited live uh, performance opportunities. Hopefully that answers the question. But I just I find on Facebook as well I see a lot of sour grapes all the time. How, you know how everybody's nasty. The record companies are nasty, and all the managers are pricks, and the uh, the streaming services are bastards, and Amazon, you know, like everything, and and. So what? I mean, that's just the way it is, right? If you're passionate about your music, and that's number one, um, if you're not passionate about whatever it is you create, then nobody else will be. And that's the first step. You got to be crazy about your music. Um, Going way back in the olden days when I was a musician, we used to play with Rush, and they opened for us, made $50. I tell people that, but and, and most people hated them. But did it work out for them? I would say so. I mean, they were fanatical about what they did, and they never wavered for that. And they didn't care who liked it, who didn't like it. They really didn't care about the media. 
what the media thought and and but they were fanatical and their fans were fanatical every time somebody saw them they got and they still have some of those fans today so i think that's the first thing in traction is you've got to be crazy about what it is you're doing um and and hope and figure out where the audience is for whatever it is you're doing right on um, yeah, Brendan, to pick up on that, like it seems in your question, you've got a lot of your variables covered, like that you're aware of some of the pros and cons, which is key here. So in just walking through your question again, um, some things that jump out at me. So up and comer. So yeah, being able to perform would be great for building your profile. But otherwise, right now, I guess, what's the goal with your release? If you're an up and comer, trying to send that out now with your profile the way it is and uh, competing with everyone else that's out there, like how many commercial sales do you reasonably expect you'd be able to get? And maybe it's not significant. At the bottom though, you say you want to offer value to your audience and stay relevant. Well, then in that case, uh, there's no better time to roll out some new music if that's the main objective. And then it's something that you can use to build on. I mean, keep writing you say that there's interest from labels well is that interest are they saying like we love what we've heard and this exact song is where we see the opportunity well if that's the case then rolling that out free right now maybe outside your interest it's something you're going to have to weigh um but what's the alternative there are you just going to sit on this music until the time that you can be out to perform again well who knows where that is or when that's going to be and like uh, hopefully I mean, I'm sure you're proud of the work you've done, but as with any artist, like hopefully the next thing you do is on par with or improves on what you've done in the past. All this to say, do you really want to be sitting on songs for six months and just twiddling your thumbs? Or can you roll out some of this music, help it to offer value, as you said, to your audience, build that audience a little bit and stay quote unquote relevant and then keep writing new songs and demoing and producing new material. If you can do it from home, great. Then you're just going to have more and hopefully better music uh, to share with people. And if you don't have the ability to record and produce it the way you'd like, well, then at least you'll have tons in the pool right in the chamber ready to go that when some of these restrictions get lifted, you've written 20 new songs. Three of those are going to be standout hits and uh, you're starting from a great spot. So uh, um, all this to say, it, your question there, it seems you're very aware of your situation and it's just a matter of weighing the pros and cons. But the general answer, uh, I know a lot of artists and we've had a few of them in the magazine on the podcast that have not let this interrupt their release schedule. They can get it out now. They can tour it and support it shortly and basically just keep the whole machine running because pausing everything in hopes that in two months, you know, things will be completely fixed and back to quote unquote normal. Um, that target seems to be moving every day. Most of the yeah. great developments in history, I was reading something about this the other day, were launched in the worst times possible. It's a trend. If you look back at some of the things that happened um, in, in the depression and in the last recession, and this is companies and all kinds of things, uh, Apple was that was Apple started that was a that was a recession and a lot of a lot of um, movements and and uh, famous people they got their start in the worst times possible and and, and sometimes it makes sense because there's really only one way to go so I, I don't think it makes sense to wait until things get better the other thing that's interesting we published a book on super tramp years ago and the, the thing that we discovered from doing that is that before they were even known in North America, they had three albums out that had mediocre sales, like 50,000. So when they brought out Breakfast in America, um, it was the first album in Canada to go double diamond, which was basically one out of every 16 people in the country bought that album. And then they did even in the quietest moments. But what happened was when they brought that one out, the pre the three previous albums all went diamond. All of them did because the fans went super chat. This is incredible. What do you got? So AM Records had to go back in and they brought out all these records out that nobody really cared about before. And they all went into millions in sales because 
it caught on. And that's, you know, you're developing an album. It might not be the one that goes diamond, but it's, you know, it's something you're proud of. And, and maybe it's two albums down the road, something goes really big, but your fans are going to want everything. They're going to want anything you've, you've produced before. And, uh, you know, a lot of it's online, so it's easy to find, but that's what happens. They're going to want your merch. Uh, you're, you know, you were, you were doing live performances for 50 people and, uh, um, also going back years and years ago, I happened to be talking to the drummer from the, the guess who, when, uh, these eyes broke and they went from playing for $500 a night to 20,000 a night in about a month. And they were just shocked because that hit it. And all of a sudden there was so much demand for them and their records and, and their live performances. And then they were playing for 10,000 people instead of 500. And that's just kind of the way it works. But most artists quit just before the big thing that breaks that's where they pack it in and and uh, they don't get to enjoy it but it doesn't work in a straight line you something you know you get one two or three albums down the road that just goes crazy and then the fans want everything you've ever done hmm. right on yeah brendan uh, thanks brendan offered a bit more info there um that masters are done marketing and start just before a pandemic and yeah radio promotion is indeed expensive i mean if you've got someone lined up and all of those building blocks were already in place uh, again I, you're gonna have to weigh it on your situation and timeline like, yeah it also mentions here that if you're not generating income to support the release it's sort of a cart before the horse here and uh, that may take some compromise um I guess you can also follow examples. Canada's Music Incubator uh, is offering virtual mentorship through this. And I mean, they've worked with some now very successful artists. I believe there's a fee involved in it. But um, yeah, Canada's Music Incubator, you may be able to get some direct targeted uh, information from someone that's been in those shoes before uh, to help. But there is some info for you. We'll keep going here. Keep the questions coming. We'll, uh, again, open it up at the end here. Um, just a few other places. We've been pointing you a lot to uh, things within the Canadian Musician Network. Again, the magazine, the webinars, nwcwebinars.com, canadianmusicianpodcast.com. Um, yeah, obviously we're proud of and want to trumpet the content that we've done and can stand behind uh, with some very credible sources and interviewees. Uh, so there's plenty in our world to get you going on this. A few others that we just want to highlight, uh, and then I'll hand it over to Jim to walk through the Stay Home Musicians to-do list. Uh, our friends at Bandzoogle, their blog is incredible, and they've got new posts, sometimes multiple a day, uh, from their staff, from working musicians. And so there you go. Going back to revenue, we had writer in there. Uh, your experience as an artist and as an artist going through COVID-19 here, Banzoogle has published blogs from uh, singer from Enter the Haggis comes to mind, uh, talking about their experiences, things they've learned, sharing advice with other people. So a great source of information and hey, maybe a potential source of revenue if you've got a great idea idea that you think could be helping more artists in the community here. Uh, CBC Music, I've noticed, has stepped up their industry-focused content. They did a piece uh, a while ago that was really well done, five ways that Canadian artists can be engaging their fans for support through the pandemic. And uh, when we say support, as Jim and I have talked about in the past, that does sound sort of charitable. Um, which may be relevant right now in this time, but um, you know, it's not always you asking for support. In a lot of cases, it's you asking for earned income for the services you provide. So uh, CBC Music has some ideas for you there, and uh, they have upped their amount of CanCon being played on the radio waves to support Canadian creators. So definitely want to give them a thumbs up. Uh, the Music Music Managers Forum of Canada uh, is one of the best, most thorough lists of and constantly updated lists of resources for uh, everyone in the community affected by COVID-19, particularly music managers. Uh, so we'll point you in that direction. Our friend at FYI Music News, uh, they do a good job 
in general, but have uh, upped their content as well with self-isolating musicians. Check them out. And lastly, musicbooksplus.com. Again, you can download the reading list from our shared files here. We've got some titles that build on some of the concepts we've been talking about here, home recording, songwriting, production, crowdfunding. And we've pulled a few of our most popular titles from those to give you a head start. But if you go to musicbooksplus.com, you can find anything. Uh, we've had a lot of attention around our Rush books. If you want to start uh, trying out that guitar intro to Spirit of Radio, musicbooksplus.com. Artist biographies, Gord Downey's uh, the latest biography on Gord, um, musicbooksplus.com, musicbooksplus.com. So here we go. I guess tying it on a bow here. Um, 13 things that the moment that we wrap up here in a few minutes, you will be able to hit the ground running with. Uh, and these are ideas from Jim. They're proven ideas. I will let him take it through and uh, maybe jump in if I've got any uh, additional tips for you here. But, but um, all yours. Okay. Well, th this list really is is uh, relevant anytime, uh, not only because you're at home a lot, but the, the good thing, I guess, is that you have more time to actually work on these things. But musicians in general, and most people are really bad um, with to-do lists. They just are bad with it. So you really have to write it out and, and get it. Uh, your list might not be the same as this, but you need a list so when you get up in the morning, you have a mission for the whole day of things you want to get done. And you cross them off. And then, you know, as the, the days and weeks go on, you see that you're making some progress on these things. And most humans are just really bad at that, unfortunately. And the time flies by. And I, I see a lot of people that I know that are either off work or are musicians. And I see them on Facebook. And they're just, they're just wasting their time. They're not really doing anything productive whatsoever. Um, they're just wasting the time. And that's okay. I mean, you can certainly choose to do that if you want. But the fact that you came to this webinar today indicates to me that you care about your career and you want to get somewhere. So you really have to say, okay, tomorrow morning I'm changing things, right? And I'm going to have, no matter where I am, I'm going to, I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to have a shower. Uh, if you have somewhere in your home to work that's like an office, then you should do that. And psychologically, then you're, you're at work. Um, you know, try and get away from whatever distractions there are if you can. So number one on this list right now, especially, is apply for any financial relief you can. A lot of the government stuff, they're going to give it away to somebody. So as long as you qualify, you should be the CERB is one, but there's a lot of them there. Um, if you have money owing from SOCAN, you should you should find out how you, you get on that list. So apply for everything. Uh, factor, um, a lot of them have changed the rules. Um, in my opinion, you should be writing songs. And you should, you know, uh, even if they're not that great, just write and write and write and write. Because what happens with good songwriters and even good composers is that they sometimes use bits and pieces from one song and another song. And even the com composers hundreds of years ago used to keep a, a, a notebook with all the bits and pieces of things. And sometimes what they ended up doing in the end were four or five different compositions. And, and that might be the case with yours. You might write, write a song and say, well, the chorus kind of sucks, but a week later you write something else and say, well, wait a minute, those two things might, might go together. Um, again, coming back to it is traction, right? A lot of these problems that I'm seeing here, if you've got traction, you know, one of the things I think about is when they announced the iPhone, like there was a product with traction. It didn't matter how much Apple could have screwed up the distribution or the marketing that they were, those people in New York city, when they at the Apple store that were fighting and they had to call the police out to, to get an iPhone. I mean, th there's, that's kind of a sign that maybe they got something there and Apple's had a few products like that. So if you see something like that, or you can create something like that, then a lot of these problems disappear. And we see that with a lot of the products that we get through our press releases. Um, some of them are just so incredible that no, 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 no matter how bad the manufacturer distributor is at distributing them or marketing, it doesn't matter because it's a product that people really want. And you see that on television. There's just a lot of products that people want and they're, they're going to get them. Uh, collaborate is, is, easy. Uh, I saw a couple of said I write lyrics, uh, but I don't have any melodies. Well, that's 
that's kind of not very hard. Um, you you know you can find people online, you can trade back and forth. Nowadays, that's easy. And if you if you look through a lot of the biggest hits of all time, not that many are just written by one person. A lot of them are collaborations. A lot of them are uh, you know one person writing the lyrics, one person writing the melodies, or just co-written. A lot of times you just get a better ideas if you can work with somebody. If you can do it in person, that's great. But now, you know, you can do it anywhere. Um, assuming you play an instrument, and with that I include uh, vocals, you should be working on that every day. You should take an hour a day and just practice, period. It's not fun, but you should be doing that. you got time now more than you'll have later, so do that every day. Get your guitar playing better and your keyboard, whatever it is you play, your recording skills um, at some point you might go into a studio and do it there, but, but now you're probably going to do it yourself. Um, but in either case, you, you want to know how to do it. You want to learn as much as possible and just get better at it. And then that might, uh, take you into producing as well. Um, get your next demo or album recorded. Uh, couldn't be a better time. You have time, uh, the software and, and the, the hardware to do that there. It's, it's not expensive, you, you can do that easily. Um, sharpen your business skills. Again, you might have a manager or at some point you might have a manager, but you still have to know something about the business enough to even hire a good manager and, and to be able to, to know um, what's going on with the record label. Um, uh, one of the things that was talked about was hiring a, a radio promoter. Well, if you can't do that, you can certainly do it yourself. A lot of musicians just do it themselves and, and might not be the best way, but radio in general is pretty receptive to that um, as long as they're treated well. Um, build or improve your website. If you don't have a website, that's, that's not good. You should have a website. You should have a domain registered that makes sense because they go away every day and um, a website's important. And, and I see a lot of them that are just horrendous. They, they look terrible. They don't make any sense. Um, you should also have an email list. You can start working on that so that when you do have a record come out, um, you've got a list of fans uh, that should be on your website, should be on your social media. You, that's not hard at all. You can do that with, you know, there's a lot of, uh, free email programs where you can build a list um, and you should have a few hundred, if not a few thousand names. You can also do that with text lists nowadays as well, which some people prefer. Um, so improving and expanding your online presence. So that's, that is your website for sure. But it's also, um, it's also uh, social media, Facebook and uh, LinkedIn, as I mentioned, you should, should search. If you're not on there, you should be. You should be working at expanding your connections and your friends every day um, and inviting people to uh, find your Facebook page. Um, keep in mind your Facebook page is also a public affirmation of your popularity or lack thereof. You should have at least a thousand likes, minimal. Because if anybody's looking at you, that's public. It's right on there. You can't hide that. They don't know what your email list is. They don't know what your website traffic is. But if they go to your Facebook page, it's right there. You've got so many likes. So so work on that. Um, a lot of them you see, they've got, you know, seven, mostly it's their relatives. So you got to work on that. Work on it. Every, we work on that stuff every day of the week, all the time. And it's, it's hard work, but you've got to work on that. Because if, if a label's looking at you and you've got 37 likes on your page, it's like, you know, what a loser. You've, you've got to have thousands, hopefully, if, if you can get it up to that. But to get it going, it, it takes some work. Um, keep in touch with industry contacts. So some of that might mean people you've met before. Um, it might mean people you haven't met, but you want to meet. But don't be shy about that. LinkedIn's exceptionally good for that because you can connect with people, you can message them, you can introduce yourself. It doesn't have to be anything that you're going to take advantage of now, but maybe it's just introducing yourself and saying, you know, we're working on this new album and we hope to have it out in October and I'm hoping I can get back to you then and, and you know, let you know what I'm doing. Most people in the industry are, are very receptive to that. We certainly are, for sure. 
um, and different messages or different means rather. Email's good. Uh, phone is better when the time is here in person is, is really good. There's a site called 10,000 Coffees where you can network with people and uh, meet different people. Um, if you want to be a producer, for instance, well, you want to connect with as many successful producers as you can find. And most of them will be really helpful. They just are. Um, even though you're not playing now, you want to make a list of places that you want to play. You want to do the prospecting and you want to get it all in a database and do the work. You can find it all on the internet, but it takes some work. You don't want to wait and say, okay, now you can go out and play in, you know, 100 capacity clubs and, and you don't even know where to find one. So you want to have that together. Look at your geography if you want it just to be in the province you're in. We'll start working on that. And then uh, some of them you can even get in touch with them and say, you know, I think your your venue is going to be great. And I'll, uh, I'm just touching base, introducing who we are. Same thing with booking agents. But if you don't have that in place when the time comes, you're not prepared. And that's what you want to be. So when some of these opportunities come up, you're prepared. And then the other thing is just, again, we call this pushing through the pandemic. Andrew came up with that. And that's what it's all about, to plan now for a brighter future, not listen to all the gloom and doom. We're all going to die. Um, you know, it's it's never going to be there because it, it, there's even recessions when we went through our first one in, in 1981, I said, recession, what the hell is that? I don't even know what that is. Um, there's been recessions since about 1780, uh, the, the uh, industri industrial revolution, and they're roughly every eight to 10 years. Now this one's different. It's not just a recession, but having said that, we've been through four recessions. We've been through 9-11 and SARS, and now, now this, the pandemic, but it's predictable um, that in each case, there's a crash and then there's uh, a rise and people say it's a return to normalcy. That's not true ever. Things don't go back. If you're expecting things to go back the way they are, they never do. They go sideways and they go different places and things that were um, like skip the dishes now is probably going to be bigger than it ever was. And, and a lot of, you know, uh, ordering online and picking up in the store, which Walmart's been doing for five or six years, is regardless of the stores being open, that's going to be normal. And there's a lot of other things that um, doing more online presentations certainly is going to be more normal. So it's not going to go back the way it was six months ago, and it never does. But you've got to figure out, you know, what's going to be brighter, where, where are the benefits, and who's going to benefit from it, because there's always people that, that don't benefit and then there's a whole bunch of people that do. So that, that but the key is um, if you do a lot of these things that we've talked about, you will have a brighter future and your revenue will be more diversified. And if there's a, a crunch in the future, uh, you want something where you're getting money every day and you can do that online. You can be selling things online and you can be getting royalties and all these other things and you want to get money all the time coming in, not just once in a while. Awesome. Um, yeah, a couple quick notes on here, um, just building on what Jim was talking about and answering some questions. So uh, yeah, Casey says, I'm assuming playing together to rehearse or perform with other musicians from different locations is impossible now. What are people using? Um, so to be clear there, to quote unquote, like jam seamlessly, uh, and I was talking talking about this with the senior manager of audio broadcast at Bell Media recently. Uh, so he is in the know. Our public networks, there's just, there's no solution that's seamless enough with low enough latency that people can collaborate or jam seamlessly only through uh, an internet connection through teleconferencing. So what you're seeing in a lot of like these YouTube or live performances is people from a different location, not in fact playing along with one another, but playing along with either a time code, a track, or even the existing song, and then gluing, for lack of a better term, those performances together. All this to say, though, you can still be collaborating remotely. If you've been in a writer's room before, like even if you can't you know, add a part onto something in real time, the back and forth, sharing of tracks, singing someone a melody and letting them run with it, 
Uh, you can absolutely be doing that even on a widespread tool like FaceTime or Zoom. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind that it may not be like a seamless quote unquote performance, but uh, as far as public networks, there's really nobody that has that ability. Uh, so you are going to be working with tools with a bit of lag and latency, but for what we're talking about, songwriting, collaborating, sharing ideas, uh, you'll be just fine there. Uh, there was yeah, another there, question. Some of that does exist, but it's it's uh, it's not perfect by any means. They've been talking about that, but until your internet connection is actually real time, um, you know, and, and some some places do have those kinds of connections. But the other, uh, if you're using a, a common uh, program like Pro Tools as an example, it's certainly not that hard to to uh, you know trade the tracks back and forth. It's not real time, but certainly you know you could you can record the uh, uh, a bed track of some sort and and get it to somebody else, and they can add to it and do it that way, and then in, in the end. It, it becomes real time, even though it's not really recorded that way. But a lot yeah. of albums are done that way, where they're collaborated. They're done in bits and pieces at different studios, and the, and then you know the guitarist might be in England and he puts the tracks on. But they're all recording to the original track, and uh, it's a bit a bit piecemeal, but it certainly works. Bingo. Um, Callum, thanks for joining us late. Yes, there will be a recording of this circulated within 24 hours of us signing off here. Um, there's one other I wanted to jump to. Pardon me for a moment here. Um, yeah, Patty was asking, being in the USA but a Canadian, uh, you're signed up with BMI. That's great. BMI collaborates with SoCan and all of the PROs around the world. So you will be getting your revenue, uh, your performance royalties via BMI from SoCan. Um, so do you need a Canadian manager? I guess that really comes down to how much business or how much focus do you want to be putting on Canada solely? Um, but largely, I mean, there's a lot of Canadian artists that are at the international level who only have one manager and may work with booking agents and partners in different markets. But um, short answer is I don't think because you're a Canadian living in the USA that you need a separate manager for Canada. Um, Banzoogle. Okay, there was one more question for Jim. Um, yeah, you were mentioning about uh, being able to, in addition to an email list, that uh, texting databases that some people prefer to be contacted via text. Um, Mandy's wondering which app or CRM offerings you're using for that to uh, manage a database of cell numbers. Um, one uh, really good one is called Easy Texting. E Z, like the American Z. Texting.com is it's really inexpensive. Um, some of the email programs, um, uh, I think Get Response, which we use, has uh, texting built in. Quite a few of them have both, um, and uh, a lot of them have a CRM built in as well. Uh, Banzoogle is definitely a good choice for for building a website. There's countless other ones, but it's it's definitely a good choice, and uh, you can go on there and build your own website and. and uh, integrated with, you know, you want to make sure a lot of these things talk to each other. So a lot of them, when you go to their website, you'll see the integrations that they have and they'll, they'll talk to different uh, programs. But a lot of this, again, Mr. Google, right? If you just look for texting programs, you'll see a lot of them. And uh, some of them work in coordination with either a CRM or a, and CRM stands for customer relationship management for those that might've seen that. Um, one, one that's good there is called Fresh CRM. It's very inexpensive or free, and you can use that one. So the key is you want um, solutions that talk to each other. That's the, that's the key. Bingo. Um, and yeah, we've given them some shine already, but uh, someone did suggest that they were looking at Banzoogle as an option for that. What's great about Banzoogle is they have got a ton of tools that are integrated in the platform. They are all directed at me musicians and um, I'll tack on there that they're very responsive if you have an idea as to you know something you'd like to see or a tool that you like you can interface with uh, the team at Banzoogle there and um, if it's something that's going to be mutually beneficial uh, they have and will work with their members with their customers to uh, roll that out there you go Justine happy Banzoogle user since 2018 great stuff um, and, they're, 
And they're a Canadian Canadian company located in Montreal, which I think is is a good thing too. And just one comment I wanted to make on the the Canadian manager. Um, when when you're um, uh, creating your music and getting it out there, keep in mind that the market for your music may not be Canada at all. And nowadays, it's it's pretty easy to figure that out. Um, in the old days, it was a lot harder, but but it might be that that the 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 market for your music is Germany, let's say, for instance, or it could be Japan, or it could be the United States. Um, so, you know, you got to think globally. That's the other thing that I always tell people um, because you, you don't know really, and but it's easy to track nowadays. You can track it on Facebook. You can track it through your your downloads or streams, and 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 sometimes that's going to tell you that. You know, the market for our music is totally in Great Britain. And that's just the way it is. So it might make sense to have a manager there or, or not, but but it might not be Canada. We're, we're a little wee country and, and a very small percentage of the world uh, music sales, still considerable, but it might be, you know, in the United States or it could be in, in uh, Latin America or who knows, but, but you got to consider that, that... Uh, um, and when it is possible to play live again, that might be what you have to look at is 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 going there and 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 playing in those markets because it might not be here and and don't get discouraged because um, your music might not have traction in Canada. Um, we're a very conservative bunch of people and not quick to endorse new things. that's that's a Canadian trait, whereas Americans are just the opposite. They they and they're just way more enthusiastic as as a an audience. When we used to play in the states, it was just like night and day. Canadians are so laid back, and it's like okay, but Americans are just so enthusiastic and and very quick to endorse anything that's new. So it, it might be your music, your market might be in Texas or who knows. Mm. Oh, great advice. Um, yeah, there we go, David. You're more than welcome. Uh, We'll cap it there, and uh, we're always here to help. I mean, we've plugged the website quite a bit. Uh, our email addresses, which I should have had right in front of you here, uh, but you can reach both Jim and I at any time. Um, I'm A King, A K I N G, first initial, last name, so J Norris at nwcworld.com, and hit us up to any follow up questions on anything we've covered here. Canadianmusician.com is the home base for the <laughs> home base for the magazine. But again, if you go to canadianmusician.com slash pushing, you can download that free copy of the ebook or read it right there in your browser if that's what you prefer. Feel free to share far and wide too. Uh, we get into some of the specifics on things like home recording, on live streaming, on uh, increasing your profile on Spotify and streaming platform playlists. All of the direct links are in there. And um, yeah, we're really proud of that. Hopefully it is of value to you. Uh, so you can grab that both here or at canadianmusician.com slash pushing. And again, nwcwebinars.com. We've got archives and archives, dozens of webinars um, covering a lot of the topics we've spoken about here, including uh, not only some of those specific revenue streams, but even uh, a webinar just on making money, basically zooming in on the revenue stream slide and uh, walking right through there. My email again, Patty is a king, a k i n g at nwcworld.com. If you go to nwcworld.com, all of our staff is there. We're easy to find. And um, yeah, Jim, before I wrap it here, anything that you wanted to add for these fine folks? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that if uh, anybody goes to our website, canadianmusician.com, and go to contact us, you'll see there's a form there, and we have it set up so that. Uh, we doesn't matter what it is, you know, if you send that in, you're not even sure who to send it to. Um, it'll get directed to Andrew, myself, or whoever it is. And that's a really easy way to do it. Just fill out the form. Um, we get it. And I have to say, too, don't be shy about doing that. If you've got specific questions, um, we don't ignore any of them. I, I still get questions from 10 years ago when I was teaching at Metalworks and people that I've done seminars with from years ago. And that's my priority. If I get a question from a musician, that's at the top of my list or, you know, somebody that needs some help. And if, if we don't know the answer, we always know where to find it. And we, we will direct you there and we won't ignore them for sure. So you can count on that. So don't be shy about contacting us with comments or questions or suggestions, and they will definitely get answered. 
we'll leave it there. Thanks for joining us here. And um, yeah, all the best. Stay safe. Take care of one another and uh, keep pushing forward. Looking forward to hearing all the great music that comes out of this thing. Take care, everybody.